Hey John, how do you get them glasses? For free with a bottle of rum. Hi, I'm still Phil. This is still pretty good cooking. <laughs> I don't know how I made that sound. <laughs> Shut up, Biggie. You stop it. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make green bean casserole. But first, I'd like to give you some history on this dish. Green bean casserole was invented by a nice old lady who named Dorcas Riley. That's her real name. Dorcas wasn't an old lady when she invented green bean casserole. She was a young lady working at Campbell's. Her idea was to sell more Campbell's soup. So she dumped some Campbell's soup on some green beans and put fried onions on top. That's how you make it. But what if you made it more legitimately? I'm going to show you how to put a whole bunch of work into green bean casserole and create a product that is probably less desirable than the bullshit version that your mom made all that time. There have actually been studies done on this, whether people prefer Dorcas's recipe or a legitimate food product. Everyone prefers Dorcas's! So why are you doing this? Because I have dignity! <laughs> also, I didn't want a 30 second video of me dumping like cold cream of mushroom on frozen green beans. Oh, I'm sorry, canned green beans. Ha! Ha! Instead, I'll show you how tedious it is to do it on your own. This recipe takes six months. Baby, it's cold outside. So why not warm up with some schnapps? From the freezer. Peppermint ice. Liqueur. It's more potent than regular schnapps. Here you go. Uh, skull? Fresh. All right, you need a pot of, of boiling water, so I suggest you begin with that. Next, you need to trim and clean all the green beans at the store. We literally bought all of them. It's more than my head. I got green bean hair. This will be a tedious and painful process. Um, there's gotta be a better way of doing this. If only we had our Kevin. Yeah, man, where's Kevin when you need him? Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, your green beans, you trim them and you cut them in half. This will only take all day. The idea is to chop off the tips as, as several at a time and line them up and you can make it a little bit faster. But really, it's best if you just get some goon friend to do this for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be here for the next 20 years of my life. Kevin. <laughs> it's time to blanch your beans. You'll never get those years back of your life. Oh shit. Remember, when you put things in boiling water, they're suddenly clean. Take that same bowl and put some ice in it. That should do it. Now, add water. Water. Just a tip, if you would like to be colloquial or sound like you're from somewhere else, just add extra letters to a word that aren't there. A good example is warder. That's not how it's spelled. Or shit in the creek with warder. You Yankee devil scum. We're gonna put our beanie greenies in there after they're done blanching. Blanching is the process of partially cooking something in boiling water. You usually do this with vegetables. So we're gonna blanch these in just a couple minutes. I put too many green beans in there so it's kind of f***y but such is life. I was gonna let those cook for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna put them in the ice bath to stop the cooking so I can hold them there for a second and then I'm gonna put it in the other thing and cook it longer. Can you believe that? Well, you should believe it, cause that's how you cook it. Congratulations, folks, you've now gotten to the point where you could have just used a can of green beans. Take a strainer, spider strainer, and dump it into ice water. The green beans, not the strainer. Oh shit. I mean, you could turn off the heat first. That would be a smart thing to do. Yes, plenty of green beans. Now listen, this recipe, like many of our recipes, may or may not be just completely stolen from some website that I found while doing research. So we're gonna add one completely arbitrary and unnecessary step to tonight's dish, which is to pepper the green beans in their ice bath. There's actually a scientific reaction here. It's a little bit chemical, a little bit gemical. Um, but basically right now we're just like allowing the ice to get pepperfied, and that really brings out the green beans greenness. This is purely for color, and also, um... Might need a couple more ice cubes in there. Also, I just recently discovered that I have an ice pick. This is it, which is fun to use because you're gonna snap the ice. That'll teach the ice who's boss. All right. 
Hey! You don't need that anymore. Okay, on with the show. Just let those cool down. If you put your hands in there and it's not that cool, you might need to add more ice. This is fairly cool and pretty peppery and also pretty green. Glad that worked. All right, I got some bacon here. I'm chopping the plastic. It did nothing. You need about eight ounces of, of uh, bacon. That's one third of this package. Courtney, you look delightful. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. No, I've got bacon in my hands. Don't do it, don't do it. Time to chop our bacon. First, we cut it in half. Half with the green bean knife. Get a little bit of that green bean flavor on there. This is green bean casserole. Now we're gonna chop it into little pieces. Sometimes this is hard to do because this is raw meat. Well, it's like treated meat, so I guess not completely raw. I don't know. Is ba raw bacon raw? Is that a philosophical question? I mean, it is a philosophical question. I really don't know the answer. I think it is raw because you really wouldn't eat, want to eat it this way, but it has been cured. That's how it's bacon. Oh, uh, Iggy's sweet voice. I'm chopping bacon, what are you doing? Watching you chop bacon. I got a sweet bacon hack for you guys about this bacon and other bacons here in a moment. All right, half pound of bacon. If you consume bacon, I recommend keeping a container to hold the bacon grease. That way, each time you cook bacon, you can just cook it in the its predecessor's grease. This is what's known as the John the Cameraman signature shot where it's so close to my mouth that all you can see is my mouth and you can't see anything else. I think I'm actually fogging up the camera right now. <sighs> Here I am, rocky like a hurricane. Anyways, take the bacon grease and use it to cook bacon. That's the best way to cook bacon. This is probably like 10th generation bacon grease right here. Every time you cook a batch, you just like, you put the bacon grease in, you cook the bacon, then you take it back out and save it again. This is kind of called like, how to have a heart attack in one easy step. Also, make sure you got the right pan heating up. This one's steaming, but the burner's not on. I think that's just steam from the oven. Put your bacon in the bacon grease. Surprisingly accurate. You gotta render it till it's tender. A rink a dink a doo. <laughs> These are cremini mushrooms. Some recipes say to use them if you want more flavor. Not mushroom flavor, literally just more flavor. Chop, 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 chop. So, in order to replicate that true Campbell's copyright cream of mushroom soup flavor, you're gonna need some mushrooms, like literally a pound of mushrooms, which if you didn't know, is a really large amount of mushrooms. <laughs> Holy balls. This isn't even a full pound. I, I, I reduced the quantity. I'm gonna be chopping these forever. The nice thing about chopping mushrooms is easy. You can just chop them however you want. It's not so hard. <laughs> this might be too many mushrooms. Wow! But the nice thing is that they're mostly water, so when you cook them down, they'll cook down into something other than mushrooms, which are cooked out mushrooms. Cooked down mushrooms, six months long, bacon, bacon, bacon's not ready to be done. Then we'll put it in the mushrooms, and we'll put it in the mushrooms, and we'll make the food. And this is a recipe for green beans, but it's 90% other ingredients. That's not true, there's a lot of green beans too. Still green. That's the pepper at work. I'd like to let the viewers at home know that um, this recipe should be cooked in a casserole dish, which is how you get the name casserole. And I'm just gonna keep backing up because the camera keeps coming close to me. But I, I meant to buy another casserole dish in order to cook this, but I forgot to, and so we're gonna cook this in a Dutch oven, which is essentially a larger version of a casserole dish. And I've run out of room to back up, so please, please stop. Please stop. Bacon is roasty toasty. Remove from the pot. Put it in a little bowl. This might be hard to do if you're cuckoo ca chew. Close enough. Now dump all the insane amount of mushrooms in there. Insane! You gotta cook the mushrooms in the bacon grease. This is like instantly absorbed all the bacon grease. That's odd. We'll see how that goes. If you've got any concern the shrooms aren't gonna cook on their own, add a couple tablespoons of butter. That just hit my eyes. And just like that, the butter is gone. This is how you cook a healthy meal. Just keep adding things that make it less healthy. Right? Right? Better make that stock now. I wanted to do that earlier and I forgot. Just found some random bacon on this stove. All right, we need to prepare some stock. If you've got prepared stock, that'll be even easier. But we don't. The ideal thing to be using at this moment in time would be turkey stock. You should use chicken stock though because it's more readily available. In an ideal world, you would have already cooked another turkey for some other event. Somehow use the leftovers to create turkey stock and then you got a new turkey which you're using the new turkey stock for but we didn't go through that process so we're using chicken stock and it's not even legit it's from paste that's okay here's a link to chicken stock which 
has not been released, but maybe by the time this is. Do -do -do. Man, all those shrooms really reduced down, didn't they? Kind of amazing. Let's go have a little shallot and garlic. Iggy, you can't have garlic. Philip, catch it. Here's that garlic. The old chopperino. There's that. Now some shallot. This will go in with the shrooms. Gotta uh, cook these a couple minutes. All right, your shit's roasty toasty. You take it and you shove it to one side of the pot. I literally just knocked some of this into the stock somehow. I don't know how I did that. I don't think there's been enough fat in this dish, so here's another half stick of butter. Melt that butter. To that, we need to add a half cup of flour. There's the flour. Now we mix it. It's gonna get real thick real quick. This is the roux. Roux roux chew. Gonna let that cook for a second. By second, I mean a minute. All right, it's been toasting. Now we're gonna add about a cup of stock. Close enough. There's that cup of stock. Whisk it. It'll thicken up real quick, just like it did. Look at that, crazy. Now we need to add two cups of half and half. Good thing I got the big bottle. You need to whisk at this point too, which is the whole thing together. But you also need to be somewhat careful because it could splash at you. This is a heavy duty gravy. That's how you make Campbell's cream of mushroom soup, I guess. But better! Ooh, that looks delicious and bad for you. It is! Gotta let this cook a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how you cook, you make the sound, you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cooked the gravy. Now it's time to add more flavor! <laughs> Here's some Worcestershire sauce. Go around the top. Now we're gonna add some soy sauce. But is it fair? Can't f***ing open it. Soy sauce! Can't close the sauce! Now we need some grated parmesan. Parmesan, parmesan, what's this on? It's parmesan. Gonna add two thirds a cup. Twist ties are difficult. Also, the camera's in the way. Of everything! One third. Two thirds. No turds. Stir. This smells incredible. It's time to add the greeny beanies. You could drain them or you could just put them in there. I suggest just putting them in there. Green bean down. You're supposed to fold them in, whatever that means. I think that means mix it up. It is looking pretty thick to me. We might add some more stock. You gotta thoroughly mix it. I'm gonna add some more stock. Just a little bit over the top. I'm gonna try to incorporate a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty amazing. Although it does look like something that'll probably give you a heart attack. All right, let's bake this casserole. Maybe turn off the heat first. Put that in the oven for 30 minutes. It's looking good. Next, I guess we could fry the shallots. Let's do that. We gotta make the crispy onion top. We're gonna use shallots, because it's different and more flavorful. Put some oil in a cleaner pan than this. That looks good. Better heat it, uh, medium. You need a lot of shallots for this. Just want thin. Circular slices. There's one. Shallots have a similar effect to onions. This <laughs> will make you cry. <laughs> one more probably ought to do it. I don't know, that looks like plenty. Like three and a half, I think. All right, in a bowl, in a bowl, put them there. Now we add some other things, like salt, some salt. You add garlic, cayenne. Oh, f it, we'll just use flour. Add some flour to coat. Just do a little bit at a time because you don't know how much you need. This gives it that crispy outside. How nice. If you like, you can break the shallots up a little bit. It might help somehow. This looks good to me. Shallots are f***ing with my sinuses. It's time for onions. Carefully drop them in the oil for frying. Don't do too many at a time or it'll get weird. There's a lot of onions. I mean shallots, but that's really just an onion. Seems mostly okay just throwing them in here, so maybe my advice was not accurate. It'll take about four or five minutes. The shallots are done because they're golden brown. We need to put these in a bowl. Turn off the heat and remove. One thing to think about is that this oil that you just fried these in is going to taste amazing. So you could save this. A shallot oil or something like that. Might be pretty good. Oh, Alright, here's that green bean casserole. Look at that. It's crazy. You can poke it a little bit. Totally unnecessary. Alright, now we top with bacon. OMG. And your fried onion. Shallot, 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 let it all oh, out. We don't need to bake that another five minutes. Casserole's done. Look at that. Oh, baby, oh, baby. Let's try that green bean casserole. It looks healthy. Whoa, damn. That ain't like Dorkopolis, man. Mm. It's like the richest gravy of all time. Nice job, team. That's how you do it. Happy Kwanzaa. God bless you, merry gentlemen. May you make the Yuletide gay. Love you. Bye.
What's up? I need to sweep. I gotta sweep. I gotta sweep. I gotta sweep. 